The transfusion of blood products, such as packed red blood cells, plasma, or platelets, requires some specific equipment and procedures to ensure the safety of the patient receiving this treatment. This video will demonstrate the setup of blood products for transfusion, as well as the other requirements of the nurse surrounding the administration of this life-saving treatment at St. Mary Mercy Hospital, Livonia. The first step of a transfusion is receiving an order for the blood products and the transfusion. There are two different orders associated with this. You'll find them under Blood Bank in the Orders page of EPIC. The first order will be to prepare the product, or potentially multiple bags of product. This example says to prepare two units of PRBCs. When the order is placed, Blood Bank will begin to prepare those products. The second order is the transfusion order. This order is what gives the nurse the authority to administer the blood product, or potentially, products. This example shows an order to transfuse one unit of PRBCs. You may notice that the associated order to prepare products ordered two units. Remember, you cannot administer a blood product unless there is an order to transfuse for each unit. With this patient, only one product is to be transfused, but another will be held in blood bank in case the patient needs it later. At that point, the doctor can place an order to transfuse one unit, and it will be instantly available. When an order for blood products is placed, the nurse should immediately put a blue blood bank band on the patient. This is used for additional identification and coordination with blood products, and the procedure surrounding these bands is explained in a separate video. The patient will also need a patent IV. A 22 gauge is the minimum requirement for blood product transfusion, but larger IVs will flow more smoothly. The next thing that must be done is to ensure the patient has a signed consent for blood in the hard chart. There are two options. The first is a consent for transfusion for blood or blood products. The patient, a witness, and the physician will need to have signed this in order to make it valid. The other option for consent is a passage included in the Surgery and Invasive Procedures Consent Form. At the bottom of the form, there is a section labeled Blood that states that the patient agrees to transfusions for the duration of this hospitalization. With the order and consent in place, the next step is to gather and prepare supplies. Two bags of saline will be needed. Small saline bags such as 100 milliliters or 250 milliliters are all that are needed for a transfusion. A primary line tubing set and a secondary blood set are also necessary. Now check the patient's vital signs. Make sure everything is within expected ranges and if there are any concerns about the patient's vitals, contact the physician before beginning the transfusion. If the vitals are acceptable, begin preparing the tubing. Prime the primary tubing with one of the bags of saline. With the secondary blood tubing, begin by closing all three roller clamps. One of the two IV spikes on this set has a clear cap, and the other has a red. Spike the second saline bag with the line that has the clear cap. Now the filter chamber must be primed with saline. Open the roller clamp located between the filter chamber and the saline bag. Leave the other two clamps closed. Squeeze the filter chamber multiple times to pull saline into that chamber. Continue squeezing until saline has filled the chamber above the level of the filter. The tubing distal to the filter must be primed as well. Open the roller clamp located below the filter and allow saline to fill the remainder of the tubing. Then close the clamp. Attach the secondary tubing to the piggyback port on the cassette and reopen the roller clamp. Before releasing the blood products, ensure the pre-procedure vitals have been entered into EPIC then click on Transfusion Report in the left column. A new window will open, and click on the Release hyperlink. That will prompt Blood Bank to send the blood to the floor. When blood products are received on the floor, there are some strict time frames that must be adhered to. Blood products must be hung within 15 to 30 minutes of reaching the floor. If after 15 minutes the blood is not hung or nearly hung, contact Blood Bank. They will most likely require the blood to be immediately returned to them so that they can return it to the freezer. Packed red blood cells must be completely infused within four hours. Any product that remains in the bag or tubing after that time must be disposed of. Blood tubing and primary tubing used in blood transfusions can only be used for four hours. This means that for most transfusions, each unit of blood will need new tubing. If units are being quickly infused, the same tubing could potentially be used for multiple units, as long as the product will be completed before the four-hour window is closed. The blood will arrive to the floor through the pneumatic tube system. The unit must be verified, which means it will be rigorously checked to ensure that it is the correct unit of blood for this patient. To begin, this is done with two nurses or a nurse in a PCT, but not a PCA. The two healthcare workers will verify information on the unit itself with that of the transfusion form that arrives with the blood, as well as the patient's wristband and a blue blood bank band. 
Double verification means that each person will read the information to the other in turn. Each person will listen to the other read off information while they verify the same information on their label. For example, begin with the blood bag and the transfusion form. I have George 2 IPRN Cathara G E O R G E T W O IPRN C A T H O U R A, date of birth 12 8 60. Patient is O positive. He is receiving O positive, cross matches compatible, unit number W3002201251. Blood expires January 20th, 2021, and he is receiving packed red blood cells. I have a unit of packed red blood cells for George 2 IPRN Cathura, G E O R G E T W O IPRN Cathura, C A T H O U R A. Unit number W3402201251144. Recipient is O positive, donor is O positive, cross match is compatible, expiration 12021. Now compare the bag to the patient's wristband and the blue blood bank band. I have George 2 IPRN Cathara, G E O R G E T W O IPRN, C A T H O U R A, date of birth 12860. Medical record number 21600015, Blue Blood Bank Band ID Y734813. George 2 IPRN Cathura, G E O R G E T W O IPRN, C A T H O U R A, MRN number 21600015, date of birth 12860. Blue blood bank band number Y734813. If all the information matches, the double verification step is complete. In Epic, click on Begin Blood Transfusion. A prompt appears to link the product to a specific IV. Then scan the unit number, product code, and expiration date barcodes from the blood bag. If pre-vitals were charted within the last 30 minutes, they will auto-populate in the vitals field. If not, enter them here. Scroll down to verify that consent was signed if any medications were ordered to be given prior to transfusion, and that education has been provided to the patient. 0.9 normal saline should be infusing. 0.9 normal saline is the only fluid that should ever be infusing with blood product administration. Now hang the blood. Close the roller clamp leading to the saline bag. Spike the blood product with the line with the red cap. Open the roller clamp below the blood product and prime some product into the filter chamber. Program the infusion pump using the drug library entry for blood products. This is the same selection that should be used regardless of the type of blood product being administered. Before starting the pump, the IV tubing must be primed with blood. Detach the tubing from the patient and cover the IV with a swab cap. The pump can be turned up to 999 milliliters an hour as long as it is not attached to the patient. This will quickly pump blood from the secondary line through the primary. When the fluid exiting the line is red, stop the pump and reattach to the patient. For the first 15 minutes of any transfusion, the blood product will be infused at a slow rate of 50 cc's per hour. Program the pump for 50 cc's per hour and input the volume to be infused, which could be different for every unit of blood product. The total volume in each bag can be found on the transfusion form. In this example, it shows 345 milliliters. During the first 15 minutes, the RN must remain in the room with the patient, observing for any signs of blood product reaction. A list of reactions can be found on the back of the blood product form. Use this as a reference. The front of the form gives a guideline for continued monitoring during the transfusion. This is not a part of the patient's record, and any vital signs written on this paper must be input into EPIC as well. It shows pre-transfusion vitals, which were completed before the product was released from blood bank. It then shows that vitals are required 15 minutes after the transfusion begins, 30 minutes after transfusion begins, and then 60 minutes, and every hour until complete. This can be confusing, but remember, it's time since the beginning of the transfusion, not time since the last set of vitals. So, if the transfusion began at 11 o'clock, the first set of vitals would be at 11.15, the second at 11.30, 
then 12 o'clock, then 1300, etc. If no reaction has occurred in the first 15 minutes, the infusion speed will be increased. For non-complicated patients, a unit of blood should be infused within one and a half to two hours. Patients that have CHF or fluid overload need a decreased rate to protect them from further fluid overload. The maximum time for transfusion is four hours. When you are checking vitals, also listen to lung sounds. If sounds such as crackles develop, it is a sign that the patient is experiencing fluid overload and the infusion should be slowed. When changing the rate, enter the total infusion time into the duration field. Policy does not dictate the specific rate for the infusion. It dictates the time the infusion will take. Some bags will have more or less than 345 milliliters of blood. They still need to be completed within the desired time frame, so entering a duration of one and a half or two hours will allow the pump to calculate an appropriate rate for this unit of blood. When the unit is empty and the filter chamber is also empty of blood product, there is still blood in the tubing. To complete the infusion, this fluid should also be infused into the patient. Close the roller clamp to the empty blood bag. Open the clamp to the saline bag and prime a small amount of saline into the chamber. Resume the infusion. When the blood transfusion is completed, the tubing will be filled with saline. Now remove the blood product bag and dispose of it. No blood product tubing or bags, either full or empty, should ever remain in the room if they are not actively in use. If another unit is ordered, and it will not be finished within four hours of the tubing being opened for the initial unit, a completely new IV setup will be required. In EPIC, the blood product will need to be completed. First enter stopped into the action room. Then make sure that the administration charge has been charted for this unit. Then right click on transfuse RBC and click complete transfuse RBC. The transfuse section for this flow sheet will be removed. The transfusion of blood products can be very dangerous if not done properly. It is important to follow all the steps and time frames when administering blood products to a patient. When transfusing platelets or plasma, different time frames for transfusion will be used. To find these time frames, look in the policy or contact blood bank.